In this video I'm going to show you how to train your own classifier so you can detect your own objects like a car for example. The first thing that you have to do is to gather as many pictures you can from your object. So in this case I'm going to use the image database for car detection from the University of Illinois. You can get it in this web page and download it here. And after you download and extract it, you can extract the positive and the negative images. The positive images are the images of the cars. So they have 550 images of cars for the training and they have also 500 images for the background or negative images. So the negative images can be anything. The only thing that they cannot be is a car. So they can be anything, any picture. So in this case, all these images are 100 width and 40 in, in height. So you also need to describe for the positives the location of the image, of each one of the images, the number of objects that are in that image. In this case, all the images just contain one object, and then the location of the object. So in this case, the entire image, so from 0, x, y, 0, 0, up to the width and height, is this object. If you have, for example, two objects, you can write the second location here or the third location here. Okay, that's the info that describes the objects in the positive part. Also, you need describing the negative part of the background, which is just a simple file which lists where the images are. And also, you need to create a BEC file, a VEC file. So, OpenCV uses an utility that you can use is OpenCV create samples and you can use it to see the images from a vector file or you can use it to create a vector file. So let's use it to just to take a look at the included example of training phases. So if you run it with this argument, you just put the vector file here and from the data files in the training phases, you, have, you put the width and height, you put that and you can see the images used for training the faces in OpenCV. So let's create now this cars.vec. So we can use almost the same thing. So you need to do this. You need to call the utility OpenCV create samples. With this argument info, you have to give the cars.info, so the location of all the objects, also the number of objects that you have, in this case 550 and also the width and height of the training that you want to create. So in this case, because cars are larger in width than height, I just put 48 and 24. And also the vector is where you want it to be stored. So let's, for example, erase this. And if you run that, okay, it's done. It created 550 samples. We have cars that take there. And we can, for example, look at it with the same command we did previously. So if you only run it, the OpenCV create samples with the vector and width and height, in this case it's 48, and if you use the cars.vec, you can see actually the cars. So that's good to know that we have the correct files there. So now, the next part is to train the cascade. So we need to have the vector file and also these background files. So once you have those two, you can train the cascade with just this example here, the OpenCV train cascade. You need a directory to hold all the files. Make sure that it's without any files. Just erase everything in the folder. You give it as the argument here. So data is the folder that all the files will be created. Vec is the vector, the vec file that we're going to use, cars.vec we just created. The background is the background images that we're going to use to train the cascade. Here the number of positive images and the number of negative images. Make sure that the number of positive images is less than the maximum number of the vector images. That's for some details in the algorithm, but but just make sure that you have less than the total number of vector paths here. Also, the number of stages 
if you increase the number of stages, the the trained cascade will be better, but it will it actually will be much slower to train. So in this case, just for this sample, I'm going to use two because it's quicker. But if you use a larger number here, like 20, for example, or 15, you will get much better results. Also width and height, and also the feature type LVP, which is local binary patterns. And this is actually faster than the hard cascade, which is very, very slow. So you can train a cascade with LVP in a couple of hours, and with hard cascade, that same cascade will be like, you will need a couple of weeks. So LVP much faster. So, okay, once you do that, the training starts and you can check the parameters here. And what it's doing is basically training the cascade and everything is being created here in the folder. So you can take a look. So once it finishes stage, it creates as a file here. So you can actually interrupt the process and continue it because it, it goes from stage after stage. So once it's finished, it should create a cascade.xml, so it should be finished. Okay, that's right, and that's it. Now you can use this cascade to detect objects. For example, if we run our car detect, which is basically the same as the face detect algorithm, I just changed the painting part. So okay, if you use the cascade that we just created with this test image, you should detect the car, that's it. So the only thing I changed from the face detection algorithm or program is that now I'm printing a rectangle instead of a circle. So that's it. Now you can train your own detectors for detecting your own objects like cars, for example.